Hi guys, welcome back to yet another video. My name is Martin. I'm filming this at home this evening. Um, it's Wednesday night here in uh, Melbourne. And uh, yeah, usually I would do this in my storage unit. Um, but tonight I thought I'll do something a little bit different. I will show off um, the books I bought from my local comic book shop today. So here they are here. Um, I didn't do it last week. I didn't show off the books I bought last week. Uh, and I kind of regretted it because there was two books in there that I wanted to talk about. Uh, and the, I'll just show it. The first one I wanted to talk, to talk about is issue 11 of Incredible Hulk. Now, the first, say, six issues of this series, maybe the seven, seven issues, uh, were, were fantastic. Um, and it's purely for the, um, the artwork. <laughs> Since Todd Klein um, stopped doing the book, uh, and I don't know if he's coming back, but since he stopped, um, the, the quality has dipped. And uh, the, <clears throat> the month by month, monster of the week type uh, concept uh, starts to grain when you don't have a top tier artist on this book. Um, and for me, <laughs> well for me, um, every issue needs to hit. Uh, every issue needs to be better than the last and uh, really needs to grab you and not let go. Uh, but I just feel that with this current artist, um, just the, the, the weakness of the book has started to, has started to show. So I've dropped this, this issue, uh, this issue, I've dropped the series. Um, I just, <clears throat> look, financially, um, I just, I, I, I couldn't justify um, buying it. And the same with this issue, uh, sorry, with this series, Wolverine, uh, issue 47. It's the last issue that I'm going to be reading. Look, it's a $4.99 book, so already <clears throat> the cost is up there. This, uh, this storyline started off really strong, um, and I'd been reading Wolverine for about five, maybe five issues before the Sabretooth War started, so I was interested and... Um, the artwork was fun, the, 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 the pacing was, was fun, um, and then, yeah, the Sabbath War started, and I was like, okay, this is great, this is great, and then it started to just lag, and it's coming out, I think, weekly, and yeah, it was, it was a 10-issue uh, uh, story, just to get it to issue 50, and I just thought, oh, what are we doing here? It's just, it's dragging, it's, it's becoming pointless, um, so I dropped it. Uh, I actually dropped it before I picked this issue up and then I read this issue and it was bloody fun. Um, so I'm kind of, look, I'm still like, uh, look, I won't say I'm happy that I dropped it, but I dropped it for a necessity, which is purely cost. Now, these are the books that I bought today. Uh, there's seven of them and let's just go. <laughs> we have... Avengers Twilight issue five or book five, if you want to get technical, and what a what a striking cover. Um, now, there's been a little bit of a wait between issues four and issue five, so there'll be maybe a little bit of catch up for me. Uh, but I think this is going to be on the top of my pile tonight. Uh, this just looks like a fun read. I'll flick through it. Um, I'll kind of spoil myself for the ending, unfortunately, but. Yeah, wow, <laughs> this is going to be a fun read. Now, The Flash, issue eight. Now, talking about how an artist can make or break a book, um, we had Mike Diodata Jr. Uh, doing the first, I think it was the first, yeah, the first six issues in this series. And his art style these days uh, is greatly, it's vastly different than his 90s stuff. Uh, his 90s stuff was um, the, the, the traditional sense where it went from left to right and the action just leaped off the page and it was fun. These days he has a more photo-centric style. So he has maybe 9 or 12 panels in a page and your eye doesn't know where to focus. And when you have a story uh, like The Flash where it's non-linear, uh, it time jumps, it's all over the place, like uh, story-wise and visually, it's all over the place. So when it becomes too confusing, uh, the, the reader, me, <laughs> just goes, I don't know what the hell's going on here. 
and the enjoyment factor just, just drops. But last issue and this issue, we had Ramon Perez on our duties and look, I'll, I'll show you. That's the art style now and it's above and beyond what we've gotten in the last six issues. So I am back on Team Flash <laughs> for the most part. Um, I think they're moving in the right direction with uh, with, with Maroon Perez on our duties. All right, now, <clears throat> Ghost Rider Final Vengeance, issue two. I'm gonna have to Google this to see how long this lasts for. I read the first issue and I was not impressed. Um, yeah. I won't give any spoilers to uh, who the new uh, Ghost Rider is. I think you can pretty much see from the cover, but uh, it just, it felt tacked on. It felt like it was um, edited heavily um, and, and maybe the editors even pushed Benjamin Percy down this road to get rid of Johnny Blaze, to get rid of Danny Ketch and to bring in a new Ghost Rider and to make him this particular guy. I think we're losing the, the point of what makes Ghost Rider Ghost Rider and what makes Ghost Rider cool. Uh, because, yeah, look, as you can see, Ghost Rider is a visual character. Uh, that's his appeal. Um, and yet, I guess, you know, it does look visually appealing somewhat. Maybe I just may, maybe I just need to have it grow on me a little bit. So we'll see, we'll see. Now, <clears throat> and, uh, a series I have been enjoying, um, except for the last issue, <laughs> uh, we have Green Arrow issue 11. And again, it feels um, like the editors have pushed um, Joshua Williamson in this direction where uh, Amanda Waller has to be the bad guy. And I think DC have taken a misstep with her. Uh, they've put her into too much stuff. No one gives a shit about Amanda Waller. And I think DC are starting to realize that, uh, but it's too late. Um, she's, she's embedded in these stories. Um, <clears throat> Years ago, we had Wonder Woman snap the neck of Maxwell Ward. I wonder if we're going to see something similar where a superhero just goes, you know what, Amanda, you're done. <laughs> and just go, yeah, that's it, you're over. Um, will that be another Maxwell Ward moment? Um, we'll see. But in the, look, the, the strength of this series is that Joshua Williamson uh, brings the fun uh, to Green Arrow um, and... I certainly um, love that aspect of it. He also writes a really good Legion of Superheroes um, story. So if Joshua Williamson was to have a go at the Legion, maybe for say like a, a five or a six issue mini series, I might be tempted to read it. Uh, but there, anyhow, there we go, that's uh, Green Arrow. Now we've got uh, three more to go and I might flip these around so that we don't end on, well, we were gonna end on this issue. So it's What If Venom, uh, it's issue three, and so we had um, <clears throat> we had She-Hulk in the first issue, we had Wolverine in the second issue, where She-Hulk bonded with Venom, uh, Wolverine bonded with Venom, and now we have uh, Venom bonding with uh, Doctor Strange. So it's a bit, it's just a bit of fun. Um, <laughs> visually, it could be better. Um, the, the, I will say that I've had a look at the fourth issue and the cover is ugly, ugly, ugly. Um, but maybe that's the appeal of it. Anyhow, it's a bit of fun. Let's just have a bit of fun. So here we go. So what if Venom issue three? <clears throat> now, a facsimile edition of Showcase issue 22, the uh, first appearance of Hal Jordan, an issue I would love to own. Now, when I was, <laughs> how old would have I been? Maybe 16? Uh, my, my then local comic book shop had uh, a facsimile edition um, of this issue. So I, I bought it and I loved it and I still have it. Uh, it's got all the spine ticks because it's weathered and aged, just like me. Uh, but when DC solicited this, I jumped on it. I wanted to get it. I'm very happy to have this. Um, I don't read a lot of facsimile editions. I kind of just buy them and then put them aside. But uh, I think 
I might be tempted to reread this again because again I read this when I was 16 years old um, the reprint not the original again I would love to own the original uh, but you know we all have uh, hopes and dreams <laughs> so yeah there we go showcase issue 22 the first appearance of Hal Jordan as Green Lantern and the last issue that I want to show in this video is Sam and Twitch case files so it's issue 2 I bought the first issue, I mentioned it on my channel, I took it back here uh, after doing the video, I read it that night and I bloody loved it. Um, so <clears throat> we have Sandwich, which are the, the detectives, um, in, uh, in Rat City, I think it's called Rat City. Um, I'm not, look, I'm not a huge Spawn fan, but I am a fan of Sam and Twitch because uh, the type of stories that these guys uh, are in is right up my alley. Uh, you know, crime noir, uh, detective stories. I just love reading it. And look, I'll, I'll, I won't spoil anything, but I will show what originally uh, caught me about this series was just the way in which the text were delivered. So we don't have word bubbles. We have the dialogue and then a little line underneath and a little... Uh, another line pointing to who's uh, speaking it so yeah, there we go and look to be honest the artwork is gorgeous I just love this uh, so I'm very happy uh, to get this look and also <coughs> the cover is a nice strong hard cover not like not like uh, Marvel here where it's just kind of flimsy uh, and what I'm getting at is that this was for look, this was $4.99 and the paper quality is average Marvel. This is $2.99, hardcover, glossy pages, it looks gorgeous. And again, the last issue, the, the first issue uh, was a great read, had a great ending, uh, it, it hooked me, and $2.99, it cannot go wrong. Um, even if you're not a Spawn fan, which I am not a Spawn fan at all. So, um, I read the first issue, I'm going to read this uh, tonight, and I mean, look at that, you have issue three right there. But you let me know, uh, are you reading this series, um, or are you reading Spawn? Um, I, I uh, again, I, I don't read it, I've got a few issues of it, but it just was not for me. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments down below, are you reading any of these books, what do you think of them? Um, what do you think of the quality of the video? I've got my ring light here, so the light's a little bit weird. <laughs> so sorry about that. But it's look, it's a freezing cold night here in Melbourne, and I, <clears throat> I'm i home with my daughter, and I didn't want to go all the way down to the storage unit because she'd be home by herself. Yeah, it's a whole thing. So uh, this is where I'm filming it tonight. <laughs> all right, so thanks for sticking with me, guys. Please like and subscribe if you wish to. I would really appreciate it. Please feel, 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 feel free to comment. <laughs> and I will catch you at the next one.